I absolutely love these clothes. So why have I only made one? Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel, which is all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. I know that many of us have tried and true patterns that we sew over and over again. And then there's always those patterns that you sew up once, but then you don't really feel like you want to sew the pattern again. But then there's the patterns that you sew up one time, you absolutely love it. And then for some reason, you just don't go back and revisit the pattern. In this video, I'm going to be sharing that last category of things that I have made that I really like, but for whatever reason, I just haven't made another one. Now I'm not going to include things that I have made very recently. These are all things that are older makes in my closet. So it's not that I haven't had an opportunity to go back and do the pattern again. I've just chosen not to do it again for one reason or another. Now, when I was trying to organize the information and how I was going to present it to you, I kept coming up with similar reasons for why I haven't made another one. So I'm actually going to do something a little bit different and group my garments by those reasons of why I haven't made a second version. So what I'm going to do is put up a picture of the pattern cover and also a picture of the garment that I have sewn as I talk a little bit about my make and why I haven't made another one. So let's just get right to it. The first reason that I find that I will sew up a garment but not necessarily go back and do it again is because I have a lot of other similar patterns in my stash. I am someone who gets pattern FOMO, that's fear of missing out just in case you don't know what that is, and I always want to try new things. And so even if I have a pattern that I absolutely love, it's like, yeah, but what if this new pattern that I haven't tried is better? So that actually happens to me quite a bit. And one category where this happens in particular is with shirt patterns. So I have made the Helen's Closet Cameron button-up shirt. It's my basic white button-up that I wear all the time. Although I do need to make another one at this point because it's a little bit tight now in the shoulders and the back, but that's not an issue for today. But I really loved the construction of that shirt and I enjoyed sewing it so much. But I know that I haven't gone back to the pattern again because I have so many shirt patterns in my stash that I haven't even sewn yet. So every time I think about making a button up shirt, I'll say to myself, oh, I should make another camera and that one was really good. But I have all these other patterns waiting for me to try. So I know that's why I haven't sewn that one again. The next one in this category is the Chalk and Notch Page Hoodie. Now I've never actually made the hoodie version. I made a sweatshirt version with a band because I didn't have enough fabric to do the hoodie but I really like it. I like that it has a raglan sleeve. It's a little bit different than some of my other patterns. And I like that there's options for the sleeve. I made the one that has a gathered cuff, so it's a little bit more feminine, but you can also do a closer fit in the sleeve. There's also some different views where you can do the one with the band that I have done, or that you can also do a drawstring that gathers it in a little bit more at the waist. Now, although I really do like this pattern and I would like to revisit it someday because I would like to make the version with the hood, I know that I haven't done it because I have another hoodie pattern that I really, really like. So I'm just more likely to choose that pattern over this one, but I don't think this pattern is bad at all and I would like to revisit it someday. The third pattern in this category is the Closet Core Tee. I made this last year as part of the Sew Fruit challenge. It's a free pattern and I really like the fit of the slightly cropped boxy tee. It's a really good one. I made mine out of a cotton spandex jersey and I love the way that it fits and I like that particular fabric because it's a little bit sturdier and I think it holds up really nicely for a boxy t-shirt. But just like with the button-up shirts, there's just a million t-shirt patterns out there that I haven't tried yet and so if I'm gonna make a new t-shirt there's a really good chance that I'm gonna pick a pattern I haven't used before, but I do really like that one, especially for like a spring and summer t-shirt. I tend not to wear the boxy t-shirts in the winter because I like a closer fit that I can more easily layer. But for spring and summer tees, I should definitely revisit that pattern. And I do have plans to, I just haven't done it yet. I forgot to mention that I will link all of the patterns I'm talking about today in the description box. And although I'm not going into detail about each of the garments that I sewed, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'm happy to answer you there. Now, the second reason I kept coming across for why I haven't revisited a pattern that I loved is kind of silly, but it's the truth. And that is that I just forgot about it. I have literally hundreds of patterns in my stash at this point, and I just can't remember every single one that I have. And so sometimes I will just be looking for something to make and I'll just scroll right past these thinking, oh, I already made that, I don't need to make it again, without really stopping to think, hey, you know, I actually really did like that, I should make another one. So the first pattern in this category is Simplicity 9385. It's a t-shirt pattern that has a lot of different options for sleeves and necklines. I made the cropped version with the bands, the 
turtleneck and it has the plain sleeves. And I really like this t-shirt and I wear it quite a bit in the winter. I would really like to try some of the other versions, maybe with the pleated sleeve, maybe with the longer cuff. But I haven't done it up to this point simply because I just forgot about it and there are other t-shirt patterns that I have and other t-shirt patterns that I would like to try and I just don't tend to remember this one. The next pattern is the Itch to Stitch Castle Point Skirt. This was in her book, So Beautiful. Now I actually do not have the original skirt anymore because I made the wrong size. And I made a size that was too small for my hips and that meant that it was really snug in my hips and the pockets kind of jutted out funny and looked weird. But I really liked the style of the skirt and I thought that it was fun and I like that you can do a longer version as well. I always intended to go back and make a second version, maybe in the longer length, but I just haven't done it because I just forget about it. And actually the book that I have is a Kindle book. And so because it's not sitting on a shelf, I totally forget all the time that I have Kindle books. So I really think that's why I forget that one is because it's just out of sight, out of mind. The third pattern in this category is the Alina Design Company Fulton Sweater Blazer. Now this one I made a long time ago and I don't even have a picture to show you because the sweater blazer that I made is long gone. This was something that I made out of a boiled wool that was extremely expensive and also incredibly itchy and I just couldn't stand wearing it and I eventually threw it in the trash because I just couldn't take it anymore. But obviously that has nothing to do with the design of the pattern. I really like the way that it looks and how it's a casual blazer, but you can make it look a little bit dressy depending on what fabric that you use. I always wanted to make another one out of something like a ponte or a sweater knit. I just haven't done it yet. And because that is an older pattern now, I can't even remember when I made my original one, maybe like 2017 or 2018. I just forget that I have it. And so that's why I haven't made a second one. The next pattern in this category is the Fabric Store Celine Jumpsuit. This was the first jumpsuit that I ever made and I made it out of a beautiful pinstripe linen that I got from Stylemaker Fabrics. And I love this jumpsuit. It's probably my favorite jumpsuit that I own at the moment. I wear it all the time in the summer. I was actually able to get a decent fit despite not really knowing a whole lot about pants fitting in my sewing journey at that point. And so I really could just pull it out and make another one, but I haven't done it at this point. Sort of like with dresses, I don't wear jumpsuits a lot and that might be part of the reason, but really I think it's just because I forget about the pattern. This is another one that's a free pattern as well. And so I don't know why, but I have a specific mental block on free patterns that I really forget that they exist all the time. So that might be another reason why I haven't sewn another one. The next pattern is Butterick 6743. This is for a paneled skirt. And I know that I forget about this one because the pattern cover is really boring looking and it just does not look inspiring. However, the skirt that I made, I added a slit in the front and I just think it's a really beautiful, simple midi skirt that you can make out of a gorgeous fabric and let the fabric be the star. It's also a really simple sew. I put it in my patterns that are good for beginners video that I just did recently. So I really should make another one. I'm sure that it would take me no time at all, but I just haven't done it yet. And the last pattern in this category is the Sew Over It Vintage Shirt Dress. This is another one that I no longer have the dress with me, and that's because of my fabric choice. So when I made this dress, I was trying to use up fabric that had been in my stash for years, and I had bought this double gauze fabric. It's a Japanese print that had deer wearing glasses. It's very like cutesy, and I think I, think I had bought it on like deep discount a long time ago. And I just don't like the color and the cutesy fabric, although I think that it's adorable, it's just not really my style. So although I really liked the design and the fit of the dress, I just never wore that dress because it wasn't suited to me. So I think that if I made the dress in a different fabric, I would wear it, but I just haven't revisited the pattern because there's so many dress patterns out there, I think I just forget about it. The third reason why I don't revisit a pattern despite really making the version that I made is because the pattern needs some adjustments. So the first pattern in this category is the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Hunter Tank. I made this a couple of years ago now out of a scrap of linen that I made and I really do like the style of that tank and how it's cropped and it ties at the waist. It's just a cute little summer tank. However, this was one of the patterns, it's one of her older patterns that Jennifer Lauren has not made in cup sizes. And so it is a little bit too big for me. I need to do a small bust adjustment. Now I'm used to doing small bust adjustments at this point. I have to do them on almost every pattern. 
So why is it a big deal for me to have to go back to this pattern and do an SBA before I make it again? It's really not a big deal. I just don't want to do it for some reason. So I haven't. I do think that the style is super cute though, and I would like to get to it eventually. The next pattern in this category is the Sew Bake Make Nora Tank. I made one out of a navy linen rayon blend, and I really like the style of this top, and there's a few different variations that you can do with the straps that is really cute. But on the top that I actually made, I find that the V-neck is just a little bit lower than what I really prefer. So I did actually do a small bust adjustment on this one so it fits properly, but just the deepness of the V just isn't really my taste. So if I wanted to make this pattern again, I think I would need to alter it a little bit and raise up that V to suit me a little bit better, maybe make the opening a little bit less wide. And I know that it might take me a little bit of pattern tweaking to get just the right neckline that I prefer, and so that's why I haven't revisited that pattern because I think it needs a little bit of work. The next pattern is the True Bias Shelby. I have sewn this dress out of a linen rayon blend in white and it was absolutely beautiful, but I completely messed it up by trying to even out the hem after I had made it and I cut it too short. And so I don't have that dress anymore because it was just way too short. Now I do absolutely love the 90s vintage style of that dress and I really want to make another one, but if I made it again, I know that I would need to make some adjustments to the pattern. It's another one that I would need to do a small bust adjustment and it is a little bit tricky because it's princess seams and the whole thing is just one long piece. There's not like a bodice and a skirt. So I think it'd be a little bit more difficult to adjust, but not impossible. And I also have a little bit of indecision on that one. I'm not sure if I want to do the, another dress version or if I want to try the romper version, but either way, before I actually make that pattern again, I do need to do those adjustments. So I know that's why I haven't made another one. And the last pattern in this category is the Paper Cut Patterns Palisade. I've made the shorts version. So I really want to make the pants and I originally intended to make the pants, but the reason that I ended up making the shorts is because I realized that the pants are really a close fit in the leg and I was gonna have to do a lot of fitting work to get the pants to fit me. So the first time around, I kind of took the easy way out and said, I'm just gonna make the shorts and then I don't have to worry about the fit in the calves. So I just know that if I want to make that pattern again, I have some extensive fitting work ahead of me and that's why I haven't delved into that one. But I do really love the way that they look and I like those pockets. So I am going to tackle it at some point. Before we go any further, if you're enjoying this video and getting some value out of it, I would appreciate it so much if you would hit the like button because it helps more people find my channel. Thank you so much for your support. So my fourth reason for why I might not revisit a pattern despite really loving what I made is because it's a pain. I only have two patterns in this category and the first one is the Alina Design Company Hampton Jean Jacket. Now I absolutely love my jean jacket that I made. It was so worth the effort that it took, but it was a really detailed sew. It took me forever. It wasn't smooth sailing the whole way. And although I would really love to have another one in my closet someday, I just haven't had the will or the motivation to do it again. I'm sure that I will eventually. I actually really would like to size up a little bit and make a jean jacket that's a little bit more oversized and easier to layer. But every time I think about doing it, I just remember how long it took me to do the first one and I'm just not ready for that yet. But I'm sure that I will be someday, but just not yet. And the second pattern in this category is McCall's 2250. It's an out of print pattern for an elastic waist slip skirt. and. Although the skirt itself is extremely easy and quick to sew, the reason why it's a pain is because it's difficult to cut. So I have a very small, narrow cutting table and I just don't have the room to like spread out all of my pattern pieces all at once. And because this is a skirt that's cut on the bias and you cut it out on a single layer, it will not fit on my table. So if I wanted to make the skirt, I have to lay out the fabric on the floor and I don't like cutting things out on the floor because it really hurts my back. So that's why I haven't made another one of these even though I would really like to is because it's just a pain for me to kneel down on the floor and cut it out. Maybe this is a signal that I need to invest in a larger cutting table. I'm sure that's on my list of things to get for someday. But for now, my knees and my back just don't really appreciate me being on the floor trying to cut things out, and so that's why I haven't made another one of these. The next category for why I've only sewn one garment from a pattern is because I feel like one is enough. I think a lot of these styles are maybe just on the edge of my personal style, maybe not something that I'm really used to wearing every day. And although I really like the garment that I made, I just don't really feel the need to make another one. 
So the first pattern in this category is the assembly line puff shirt pattern. I got this pattern in a needle sharp box and it was a linen rayon blend in this beautiful green color. And I absolutely love the top that I made. However, I just feel like one is enough. I was watching Michelle from The Sewing Bunny the other day, and I think she was saying in one of her videos that she's more of a blouse person rather than a shirt person. And I started thinking about it, and I think I'm the opposite. I think I'm more of a button-up shirt person than a blouse person. Because although I really like to make blouses and I think that they're really pretty, I don't really wear them that much. And that's true of this blouse as well. Even though I think that the color is beautiful and I like the style of it, I just don't really reach for it all that much. So that's why I don't think that I need another one, but I do like the one that I have. The next pattern is the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Sorel Dress. Now I made this out of a Rifle Paper Company quilting cotton, and I think that it's beautiful. I think the style suits me. I really like the pockets. It's a really nice summer dress, but I just don't really feel like I need another one. I always need to be careful when thinking about adding dresses to my closet because I'm just not a dress person. And as much as I might wish that I were a dress person, I don't wear them that much. So it's not really worth it to me to remake dresses unless I'm just overwhelmingly in love with the pattern because there's just so many different dress patterns out there that I haven't made yet that I want to try. And in the reality is it's just not going to get all that much use. So it doesn't make sense for me to make another one of these dresses, but I do love this one. I think that it's really pretty. The next one is the Little Pomegranate Sabina Skirt, which is a free pattern that I also made for the Sew Frugal Challenge last year. Now, I really surprised myself that I wore this skirt more than any other skirt in my closet in 2022. I made it out of a really beautiful drapey Cloud9 rayon. And the reason why it surprised me is because I feel like the style is a little bit frillier, a little bit more girly than what I normally like. So I'm not completely crossing this one off the list that I would never make it again, but I think I feel really satisfied with just this one. I do wear it quite often. I do really like it. I do find that it goes in my wardrobe a lot better than I thought it would, but I don't think that if I made a second one that I would wear it as much as I wear this one. So I think maybe this one is the most classic instance of one is enough in my closet. The next one in this category is Butterick 6895, which I made out of a plaid cotton linen blend that I got from the fabric store. I absolutely love this shirt and I made it kind of towards the end of summer so I really didn't get an opportunity to wear it as much as I would have liked. But as soon as the weather warms up, I'm sure I'm going to get this one out and wear it a lot because I do love it. However, I do kind of feel like one is enough. I think with that sharp pointy collar style, it's a little bit unique, it's a little bit distinctive, and maybe I don't need a whole bunch of them in my closet. But I'm really proud of the shirt that I made. I think that I did a good job of matching the plaids and getting a really good fit. And so I love the shirt that's already in my closet, but I don't necessarily feel like I need more. The next pattern is the Deer and Doe Maya Sotis dress, which is on the dress form behind me. I love this dress. It was another one that I felt the style was a little bit outside of my comfort zone and I wasn't sure that I was going to like it, but I really surprised myself by how much I loved it. However, I think that that one is enough. Again, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but I'm just not a dress person, so it doesn't make sense for me to fill up my closet with tons and tons of dresses that I know that I'm not going to wear. So I think that this dress is absolutely beautiful, and I feel really great in it, but I just think that one is enough. And the last pattern in this category is the Pattern Emporium with Love Poncho. Now, I absolutely love the color of this fabric. I think that it is beautiful. I used to have a ready-to-wear poncho that was a very similar style to this, and I really liked it. The reason why I feel like one is enough for this particular pattern is because I think my style has changed since I had that original poncho, and I'm just not wearing as many tightly fitted pants like leggings or skinny jeans, and I think that that is really the silhouette that looks best with a poncho. Now that I'm wearing pants that are looser in the leg, I just feel like it would be too much volume if I tried to wear the poncho with pants like that. So this doesn't get as much wear as I originally thought that it would. Now actually, when I had my original ready to wear poncho, I wore it a lot in the summer with like jean shorts as sort of like a when it gets chilly in the evenings, you just throw it on as an extra layer. And I might end up doing that again. I'll have to see in the summertime if I do pull it out and wear it. But for now, I totally feel satisfied that this one that I made is enough. This last category is one that I'm fondly referring to as I have no idea why I haven't made another one of these. Every single one of these garments I absolutely love and there, I can't even think of a reason why I haven't made a second one, but I just haven't. 
So to start with, it's another Jennifer Lauren handmade pattern. I feel like her patterns are getting really represented in this video for some reason, but it is the Ashleen blouse. And I made mine out of a double gauze. I made the version that is not a shirt. It's just the pull on blouse version. I really love the square neckline. I love the sleeves and how they're full, but they're not too full. I like the shape of the top. And I know that I said earlier that I'm more of a shirt person rather than a blouse person, and maybe that's why I haven't made a second one. However, the Ashleen blouse actually has a second view that is a shirt that buttons all the way down and has a collar. And I really, really wanna make that version. So I just have no idea why I haven't made it. It doesn't make any sense to me. I should make another one, but I haven't. The second pattern in this category is McCall's 8058. It's for a fitted t-shirt dress. I love the one that I made. It's a crew neck, it has short sleeves, it's a shorter length, it's made out of a beautiful cotton spandex jersey. I feel like the style really suits me. It comes in so many different views. You can do longer sleeves, longer lengths, you can do different necklines. So there's plenty of variety in the pattern. It's not like I would need to make the exact same dress again, but for whatever reason, I just haven't made another one. Oh, and it doesn't even take a lot of fabric, I don't think. I'm actually way more likely to wear a knit dress rather than a woven dress, so it's really very strange. I don't know why I haven't made another one of these, but I really, really should. Along the same theme, my next pattern is the Pattern Emporium Every Day's a Weekend Dress. I have talked about this dress so much on my channel that you're probably sick of it, but it is my favorite dress. I made it out of an art gallery cotton spandex jersey, and it's a beautiful fabric. I feel like it really suits the dress. I feel like the dress really suits me. It's extremely comfortable to wear and it's another pattern that has like a million different versions. I actually do really want to make another one, but right now I don't think that I have any fabric in my stash that, that is appropriate for the dress and that I have enough of. So maybe that's why I haven't made another one, but I really, really should just make another one because I love that dress so much. And I already know that unlike some of my other dresses, I would wear that dress because I wear the first version all the time, even in the winter. The next pattern is the Green Style Creations Flare Leggings. I made them in a classic black. I love these for loungewear. I don't really wear them outside the house, but they're super, super comfortable to lounge around the house in, and I've even worn them for things like yoga. And this style is even super on trend at the moment, so it's not like I'd be feeling like I was out of style wearing them. I just haven't made another pair. I have fabric in my stash to make two more pairs of these, but I just haven't done it. Another pattern in this category is the Tilly and the Buttons Pearl Cardigan. I really like the version that I made. I made it out of a sweater knit that I got from StyleMaker. I actually think that my color option that I chose was not the best for me, and so I actually really want to make another one that would suit me a little bit better. It's a really simple sew. From what I can remember, it sews up really quite quickly, and it does have some different options where you can do the balloon sleeve or you can do more of a fitted sleeve. I absolutely love the wrap cardigan style. I think that it's flattering on everybody, but I think that it works for me too, even with my small chest, and it goes with a lot of my bottoms. I just haven't taken the time to sit down and make another one. I do have fabric to make it. I just need to find the time to do it. I appreciate so much that you take time out of your day to watch my videos, and here's the one that YouTube thinks you should watch next.